Hello, thank you for clicking play on the video. If you've clicked play on this video, you've probably seen my uh, hand wrapping poll that I put up on Instagram about a month ago. What we're going to look to do is show you the types of equipment that I'll use to wrap hands. From there, show you how to wrap hands for boxing, kickboxing and MMA competition and then maybe some variances with rule sets in there as well and then how to remove the wraps so that you can either use them again for training or keep them as a memento and I don't have to see anyone that shows really horribly pulling their wraps off and making a mess off them. So I hope you enjoy the video and look to like, share and subscribe and all that stuff that everyone says on YouTube. So we'll start off with the materials. Gauze bandage to start off the, the initial wrap. I've gone with the 10 centimetres uh, by four metres uh, bandage here. A lot, I usually go with five centimetres, but I read the advert on Amazon wrong, so I've had to go with the 10 centimetres ones. I've got a big bundle of this in the house, but it's, it's actually working out pretty well. It's providing a lot of nice support um, for the wrist. Next thing is the uh, zinc oxide tape, available again from Amazon or uh, climbing shops. This is a one and a half centimetre tape and that's going to provide a lot of the wrapping on the back uh, of the hand. To split the fingers, I've gone with the half um, cent or sorry, centimetre tape, again available from climbing shops or from Amazon. If you can't get hold of any of the skinny tape, then you can literally just split this down the middle as you go. It's a little bit more extra work. But um, yeah, it's, it's a, another way to get around to doing that. Lastly, we have the safety scissors to cut the wrap off at the end. You'll see here I've made, um, I've pre-made a little knuckle pad um, to go on the person's hand as you'll see uh, later on. I'll show you how we use that. And I've also pre-made some strips to, to go in between the fingers as well. So to start off with, I always make sure their hand's nice and flat. Sometimes I'll give them a little hand massage, pop their knuckles if their hands need it a little bit. Free hand massage for you as well, Ian. And make sure they keep the hand flat and the fingers eh, nice, and, nice and white eh, for this part. So I'm going to take the bandage, open it out a little bit, and I'm going to put it on the back of his hand where his watch would be. Okay, the, the, the longer bandage is pretty good for providing a lot of eh, wrist support. Now from there, I'm going to look to travel away from the thumb. So I'll usually go round here, maybe three or four times. Sometimes if I'm really struggling for a bandage, I'll go around less, but I'm looking to really support uh, the wrist here. Not so much that it can't move, but it should feel as though he's got a nice, uh, strong support there. Now, once I've gone around that three or four times, I'm going to extend out a little bit, and I'm going to look to come diagonally down to the pinky. From here, it's important that Ian keeps his fingers wide. If he keeps his fingers too narrow here, we end up with a really narrow space to work with, so I'm trying to make him keep his fingers wide. So I'm going to go round the hand. I'll just go round it once, and then I'll stop just in between his finger and his thumb. From there, I'm going to, I'll always ask the fighter if he can hold that for me. And what I'm going to look to do now is apply the knuckle pad. Now, to make the knuckle pad, what we usually do is this motion with another bit of bandage, and then pull it off their fingers, okay? If this is amateur MMA, I won't even bother. Um, generally the padding is thick enough in amateur MMA gloves that I think this is almost a little bit of overkill. For me it's more about protecting the back of the hand there and the wrist. For MMA, um, for full pro professional MMA, I will generally look to apply a knuckle pad unless the fighter in particular doesn't like to use it. And I'll definitely use this if the fighter is competing in boxing or kickboxing where they're going to be throwing a lot of punches and there's, yeah, they'll, they'll have to yeah, punch for a, a number of rounds. So, what I'm going to look to do is find the knuckles here. See his knuckles there. And I'm going to look to put the back of the padding, so the end of the padding, on his knuckles, making sure it covers all four knuckles. From there, I'm going to look to wrap round one time. Not pulling it too tight, I never want to be putting lots of tension through here. Just enough that it holds everything in place. Again, I'll ask Ian to hold this for me, thanks mate. Then from there, I'm going to look to fold this on top and I'll usually split it wider a little bit. I'm going to pull it just enough, so when Ian makes a fist here, I'll ask him to make a fist. Clench up. 
that the padding is still on the front of his knuckles here so it's providing a nice bit of protection for those knuckles from there I'll just get him to open back up again and from here I'm going to go over the top of the knuckle pad here and then come back around you'll see I've got a little bit extra gauze here but that's fine that can just get folded over there again I usually prefer a little bit thinner gauze but this will do Okay, I'll go around this one more time just to make sure everything's nice and secure. Once I've done that, I'm going to go back towards the wrist. From here, I come out the back. And from here, what I'm going to look to do now is go around the thumb. Some fighters don't like to get their thumb wrapped. It's generally a personal preference. I will always prefer to wrap the hand. I, I find it secures the, the gauze a little bit better. And whenever I've not wrapped someone's thumb, they always complain they have a sore thumb afterwards. So they're getting their thumb wrapped. From here, back over and before I go around the wrist I'm going to ask Ian to make a fist here feel pretty comfortable so there's not too much pull on the thumb from here you can just keep a fist that's totally fine and then I'll just finish up by wrapping around the wrist however many times the, the bandage is about to finish now so that's fine usually I'll just finish up pop this round and then I'll just find somewhere to tuck this in to secure it and then I'm going to look to start taping the knuckles. Once we've completed the bandages, we're going to wrap the wrist. I know I said I was going to wrap the knuckles, of course I'm not going to wrap the knuckles, that's uh, not legal. So, wrapping the wrist, wrapping the back of the hand and wrapping the thumb. Okay, so I always want to secure the bandage. So what I'm going to look to do is pull out some tape. Again, I'm always going to start at the back of uh, Ian's thumb and where his wrist uh, connects to his hand. From there, I'm just going to find that and then just tape round here. And then that's me secured uh, the initial bit of the bandage. Again, we're never pulling this bandage too tight. I don't want to cut the circulation off to his hand. Now, once I've, t once I've uh, got this initial contact with the tape, what I like to do is twist the tape so I'm going sticky side up. And I'm going to look to wrap the, pretty much the whole wrist and just uh, every every time I come round I'm advancing halfway up the tape. Little trick, you know, tip for you is when we're extending the tape, I'm not pulling it against Ian's wrist, I'm going to secure with my hand underneath, pull the tape out and that's, that ensures that the tape never gets too tight on Ian's wrist. And just get this round nice and smooth, just advancing up and round. here, easily rip on the tape. Now that's has got a, a base for the next part of uh, wrapping, uh, taping the hands and we're going to look to go in between the knuckles. So I'm going to get Ian to turn over and open up his palm. Okay. Now because I've used slightly thicker bandage I've covered up a little bit more of the palm so something's a little bit more work to do here but I should be able to get the bandage in such a way I can get my finger through uh, no problem. From here, this is where we're going to look to use the, the skinny tape, okay, the centimetre tape. And I've already pre-ripped some of these uh, strips. What I'm going to look to do is stick my finger to it and then tape it over the back of my hand. From here, I'm going to go in and the back, uh, on the underside of the wrap and push, the, push this all the way through until I can grab it on the other side. From here, pull my finger out. Here, what I'm going to, to do is bring all the bandage together, and I'm going to, to create a little, I don't know what you call that, a little twist in the wrap. So I've secured the wrap here. From here, Ian's going to turn over, and I'm going to go in between his fingers here. Now, before I take the back of Ian's hand, I'm going to ask him to make a fist. I'm going to make sure the knuckle pad is still over the knuckles. And then I'm going to look to pull this over and I'll usually put a little pinch in here. And with again, without pulling too tight, I'm going to tape it to the back of Ian's dress. This is where this sticky bit comes in, so it helps get that double stick on there because sometimes that's, it quite easily uh, pulls off. From there, Ian's going to turn over and we're going to do that two more times. Doesn't really matter the order, but I always like to make sure, open up Ian. I always like to make sure I go with the, the middle um, the middle first. I'm going to go down the pinky, pull this out, and the 
connection and twist, and again, you'll find your, your own way of doing this as you go on. Turn over, make a fist, still making sure that knuckle pad is connected to the knuckles. Connect on the back of the wrist, you'll see it's starting to bundle up, which is cool. Turn over, last one. Just now, you can see that I've, this is all nice and tightly pulled into his knuckles. We're still providing a lot of knuckle uh, protection here. From here, I like to just secure with one strip of tape all these to the back of his wrist. So the, that tape is going nowhere now. It's nice and secured to his hand. Now, from here, we're going to look to start taping the hand. So the first thing I like to do is offer Ian a handshake. So he's going to put his hand in a handshake position. Okay, so he's going to keep it open for me. Get open and nice wide to the hand. Nice and straight wrist position. Here I don't want to be wrapping his hands with his wrists all bent here. I want to get a nice straight position. Extend a bit of tape out and just attach on just behind where the knuckle pad is. From here I'll get Ian to make a fist. And I'm going to look, this is the only time I really pull things tight, when he pull this tight down on the back of his hand, but you see it's not tight right round his hand, it's just tight across the back. We need to make sure that we don't have tape across the knuckles, the, the knuckles. that is uh, an illegal taping uh, procedure. We want to get it behind the knuckles so it's just the padding that's on the knuckles. From there I'll ask him to open up. I'm going to do this slightly differently. I'm just going to like to tape this behind and make a catch on the underside here. Okay. From here, I'll ask him to make a fist again, and then I'm going to again tape down the back and on exactly the same line and break off at the side. Now he's going to like to stay in this position. From here, I'm going to like to create a bunch of little strips that just overlap. The last strip. I'm looking to go from just the side of the thumb to the other side of his wrist, of his hand, sorry. Here. This is where you might find you have, if you have a fighter who's maybe had a previously broken hand, uh, the, the metacarpal bones are broken. I hope that's the right uh, bone, otherwise, I just sound like an idiot. But if you've seen the metacarpals, he's maybe broken off before. So, I want to make sure I apply a lot of tape to this. This is really the, my primary concern is making sure there's a big structure in the way so that his bones don't ping out the way when he starts uh, to punch anything. So, you can go over this as many times as you want. You're not providing any. Uh, pressure on the underside of the hand, you're just putting a lot of pressure on the back of it and pulling this tape nice and tight down the back of the hand. Now, being a patriotic Scot, I like to go from the pinky and cut across here and then go to the index finger and cut across here and get myself a nice cross on the back there like a salt tire. Okay, I just find that secures all these bottom bits, uh, all these bits of tape here. Last thing, he's going to give me the thumbs up. We want to attach onto the basically the end of that uh, saw tire I've made and I'm going to, to go round his thumb. Now before I attach this to anything I'm going to ask him to grip up and make a fist. So he's in a perfect he's perfect punching position. I make sure I go right down and then I'll usually look to finish up by securing this to the back of Ian's wrist. Okay, there shouldn't be anything too tight here. If you're not happy with the stickiness, I can add some more tape to it, but nothing should be too tight. From here, I'm going to ask Ian to turn over and open up. So I don't, I want to have his path clear, especially if he's competing in MMA. He's going to have to grip people's wrists, so I want to make sure that this tape is out of the way. So I want to make a nice little cut on either side, here, we 
can look to, it's quite long, so I'm going to pull this little bit of tape off, get rid of it. From here, I'm going to look to start tucking this underneath and creating a bar for Ian that you can hold on to. It'll stay inside his glove. Trim off any, any loose bits of tape that you don't want um, to be seen. And also, take, cutting off the extra gauze. Obviously, if they're boxing, it doesn't matter. You can, take, you can just leave that. But if they're competing in MMA, they're going to want to have an open palm so that they can grip things or palm strike people if they're fans of badge rooting. From here, I'll get my fighters to grab up, ask them if they're happy with that, is to grip. Then from there, I'll get them to make a fist. Pad down that knuck uh, the knuckle padding and smooth out all these little bits of tape in there. Cool. And that is pretty much how I'll wrap a hand for professional MMA, boxing or kickboxing. Again, for the only difference being really for amateur MMA, I generally think the knuckle padding here is overkill um, because the gloves are so padded, but the rest of the wrap is, is pretty much the same. And they're open up here. Nice clear palm, nothing too tight, no tape on the knuckles. Okay, so to remove the wrap, we're going to take the safety scissors, put the safety side in first, hopefully, so we don't cut Ian and kill him to death. And we're going to let it go on the underside of his wrist. And just gradually take our time and just cut through the wrap. You don't want to take your, you don't want to take your time in this bit, don't want it to see any blood. Um, or anything. Once we've made that cut, I'll also make a cut on the thumb here as well. And from there, Ian should be able to pull that off like a glove. There we go. And if he wanted to, what he'd be able to do, if he wanted to use this for training, he'd maybe want to tape the back of the inside in here so that um, it lasts a little bit longer. And he can then look to reapply this uh, by putting his hand back in. It's a bit fiddly sometimes. Then from there it's just a case of taping this back up um, and then using the wrap again. You could also look to do this, just make a special training wrap, in which case I would certainly look to make this maybe a little bit tighter and make sure all the inside was taped so it lasts a little bit longer. But he doesn't want to use it for training, he now has a souvenir of his first ever hand wrap. <laughs> there you go mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video guys, uh, I hope you got something from that, um, that's my approach to wrapping hands, whether it's your first amateur fight or whether you're going up for a world title, that's pretty much how I'm going to look to be wrapping your hands. If you like the video, feel free to share it, if you like what I'm up to, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all the usual social media channels. If you have any questions about anything that I've covered in the video, drop me a message and I'll happily get back in touch with you. Thanks very much.